Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We are continuing our series, When in the Closed Sicilian. If you have not been following, we are doing an entire playlist with all the relevant systems uh, in the closed Sicilian from the white perspective. Right now, we are looking at systems dealing with the move Knight F3, which is counterintuitive to your uh, typical uh, closed uh, Sicilian aficionado, but there is a method to the madness, and I suggest you look at the earlier videos in discussing the system where I do explain why Knight F3 is uh, employed. But if you are new to this, to this video, please check the links below the uh, uh, actual book that this uh compilation is based off of is down there uh, if you would like to get it for yourself also DVDs uh, related to the opening also and also please um, if you can spare uh, please uh, uh, donate I would great, greatly appreciate uh, the help on this channel let's get into it this is our last game dealing with Knight of three systems and with the white pieces the uh, famous attacking player uh, Victor Kuprechik and with the black pieces Grandmaster uh, Mihail Suba this game is from 1980 so let's get right into it so e4 c5 again we see knight f3 right feigning the open Sicilian and getting more information out of the black player and then once d6 is employed knight c3 e6 and g3 bypassing d4, knight f6, bishop g2, bishop e7. And we can see by the knight f3 move order, black has um, probably bypassed his normal response to the uh, straightforward closed Sicilian, which typically involves a fianchetto of the dark squared bishop on g6, excuse me, on g7 after the move g6. Bishop e7, castles castles and now h3 knight c6 d3 and a6 here uh of course the common idea is to expand on the queen side all right and a6 is a little suspect because usually in these lines white never goes for this move a4 which usually you have to, um, if white plays a4, then you have to uh, prepare b5 with a move like a6 so you can get it in. Normally, you just play rook b8 and then just b5 straight away. So a6 is a little little bit of uh, waste of time. And this could be indicative of black not really being prepared uh, in this uh, system. You know, to play against the closed Sicilian. So he plays a6. And, you know, where he could have basically just played rook b8. And killing two birds with one stone. One, preparing to move b5 in the second. Getting the rook off of this potentially dangerous diagonal when things open up. So instead, we have this move a6 here. Knight h2. Again. In these knight f3 systems, eventually f4 has to be uh, prepared. And so the knight here is moved to h2. Bishop d7. And this is what I was talking about with the move a, um, a6 here. So now bishop d7 has to be played in order to protect the knight. So, of course, b5 would be meant by e5. So, the knight will be able to get out of the way by, say, capturing on e5, but then what of the rook on a8? So, bishop d7. Of course, this allows white to accumulate some uh, momentum for his attack. So, f4, b5, g4, and we have opposite wings attack. Which are very dangerous, especially with the player whose king is, uh, you know, in the midst of the attack. All right. And f4, g4 is a familiar theme, especially when the knight is at f6 already. The g4, g5 uh, pawn push is good to 
um, push potential defenders away from the protection of the king side. B4, knight e2, and now e5, and now knight f3. So we see the knight return to f3 after the f pawn has been uh, released. All right, and so <clears throat> white simply realizes that he has time. He reorganizes pieces in, in the best fashion before continuing on, uh, you know, in, in his assault. Okay. E takes. Bishop comes out. And now knight E8. And C3. Okay, so now, again, typical motif. And uh, this opening, and of course many other openings, Rui Lopez, Ponziani, even in uh, the uh, Alpin variation of the Sicilian, see this idea of C3 with the idea of then playing D4, um, having the double pawn center. C3 not only um, creates the idea of pushing the pawn, but also takes the square away from the enemy knight. Okay. <clears throat> so now B takes B takes so white is now taking care of two items on the list one is um, securing a nice uh, nice control of the center and the other is opening up the king side opening up this F file rook to C8 and the idea behind rook c8 is it kind of puts a monkey wrench in d4 right away because of the uh, b4 square and then subsequently the c2 square. So just to illustrate, d4, c takes, c takes, and then the knight comes here. And then, you know, you have like little issues here. So that's why the rook here, excuse me, rook on this file is, um, you know, relevant in that particular variation. So patience is a virtue here and is a tried and tested move. King H1, just getting the king off of this long diagonal here. Black plays bishop F, uh, excuse me, F6, E6. Bishop drops back to H2. Queen a5, trying to increase the pressure on the queen side here. Queen d2, now the rooks are connected. This also frees this knight to be able to go and participate in the upcoming attack. As now it doesn't have to protect the uh, c3 pawn. Knight c7, there it goes, knight g3. Notice how the queen took the... Whoops, took the place of the knight in the protection of that pawn. Plus, it connect, connected these rooks. So, it was like a two-for-one uh, deal there. Bishop fianchettles itself. So, now you have a double attack here. And now, e5. All right. And again, Kuprechik is a very dynamic player. And now, the lightning strikes. So, d takes. So now you have this temporary blockade here on e5. So this pawn is um, not in danger. And now knight h5. Threatening to mess the pawns up in front of the king. Bishop goes to e7. And now he captures knight takes e5. Knight takes e5. Bishop takes e5 with the threat at the same time on here on g7. So f6 weakening the king side somewhat. And now, um, Kupre, Kuprechik drops a bomb in the position. Plays a move. Knight takes g7. Out. The idea is here. If he tries to, you know, take this bishop, then this bishop gets captured, right? Knight takes e6. Real simple combination. Knight takes e6. Notice the vulnerability of the king on this diagonal, which is exploited by bishop e6. Excuse me, bishop d5. And then with this defense, right, 
pretty much the only legit defense. Then the queen just comes here. So it gets the piece and, and then some. So that's the idea with knight takes g7. Is that this bishop can't really be captured. Therefore, king to g7. But notice now the king has walked right into a pen situation which allows the queen to come in. So queen g5. King goes into the corner. Rook takes f6. And this is all forced, of course. Bishop takes f6. Bishop takes f6. Rook takes. Queen takes. And so the king has been uh, thoroughly denuded. And now it's just a matter of time here. King g8. Queen g5 check. King goes back. Now queen e5. King g8. Of course. Where's the party at? The rook wants to get in. Queen b5. Now notice. Three of black's pieces are all on the queen side. So the queen is desperately trying to get back over for the defense. Queen g5 check again. King h8. Queen f6. King g8. And now rook e1. All right, and here's an important point. I usually make these points in conclusion, but um, I want to say it right now while it's fresh in my mind is that often when you're attacking, there's a principle of two weaknesses. And so we can see that uh, although Black's King is, is exposed, that um, it's really hard to just mate the black king straight away so normally you have to come up with a double attack or another uh, another object to attack in order to really uh, stretch black's forces to the point of breaking and that's what a uh, chick does here so in the midst of attacking the king he switches over to attacking this bishop on uh, the e-file and usually when the opponent's position is really stressed out that is enough to break the um, break the uh, the the opponent's defenses uh, for good, okay. So let's see what happened next. Bishop defends itself, and now this opens up the rook coming to the seventh, which is usually. Uh, a sign of really bad things to come, right? As the defense stretches beyond its capacity, the knight is left abandoned. And so now that the peace equality has been stored, restored, excuse me, the uh, the pawn advantage of white, uh, you know, just decides the issue at this point. Queen takes d3, queen g5, queen g6, and now simply just switching objectives now from the all-out assault on the king to just having the better end game, which is typical. We can see again, double attack, rook c6, king f7. And this is all just adrenaline moves right here at this point. Dynamic player just trading off pieces. That's a sign of a mature player knowing that uh, he can simply transform one advantage to another. He didn't try to overpress the assault with the heavy pieces. Instead, he traded down to an advantageous endgame, which is super safe and very hard to blunder away. Trades off everything. Same color bishops, and uh, black just does not have a, a good chance at surviving against a strong player. Even at this moment, he takes the time to fix these pawns on the same color as the bishop, but he's just down uh, too much material. After g5, king g2, king g7, and h4, of course, breaking the bind here. Uh, white was forced to resign, and that ends our... Um, 
discussion of the systems dealing with Knight F3. Stick around for the uh, uh, continuation of this series, where next we will be de dealing with another defense from Black on move two, which is the uh, move E6 that uh, was used uh, by Kasparov, of course, who faced the uh, closed Sicilian uh, more than one occasion. Right, being uh, um, one of the grandfathers uh, or uncles, if you will, of the uh, Night Off Sicilian. So, um, looking at, we'll be looking at some of his games as a defender um, against the closed Sicilian in our next video series. Again, please like, subscribe, uh, your comments down below. Check the links below and uh, also that donation box. All right, so um, stick around. Again, there's a whole playlist dedicated to all the variations in this opening. And uh, if you have any opening suggestions or openings you want me to go through in the same uh, format, uh, I'll be glad uh, to do that. All right, so stick around, and I'll see you on the next video.